Well, stand builders, today is the day. Yesterday I got my stand up here, I got some lumber with today, and today I'm gonna use my little 30 horse tractor, get the stand set up here in this logging clearing, and I figured today would be a great day to go over how I built the stand, what kind of inspired me to build it, what are some of the features that I used on it, and yeah, just have some fun. Now before we get into moving it and into the stand, I gotta do a little car jockeying here. I gotta move some stuff around to get my truck hooked up to get it to be lifted off. And I will say before you make fun of me too much, I am only gonna be raising this stand up about three feet because I'm by myself right now and just to be safe, that's about the max of what this tractor can pick up and um, I don't wanna die today. So anyways, let's get into it. Forgot my big strap. At the other trailer, I should add. Be right back. Okay, so here's the plan. Like I said, I'm by myself. This is, this is just gonna be a temporary height setup. But the plan is, I'm gonna lift this off. I'm gonna get the elevator brackets on it. I'm gonna swing it out here and have it overlooking this cutting that we did. I'm gonna be doing a video um, in the future here about how I made these diversity pockets and why I decided to log the land off here But that's for another one. So I'm gonna get the lumber laid out. I'm gonna get the elevator brackets all set I got the strap on there. We'll swing it over and then we're gonna get into how I built this deer stand is a six by six octagon stand. I was kind of inspired by Brett Moravitz, I think is his name. You've probably seen his videos out there. He's got an extremely detailed step-by-step -step process of building an octagon tree stand. Now I wanted to build that exact same one. The problem is at my house, and if you're watching this and you're from Minnesota or Wisconsin or anywhere up in the upper Midwest, we had an extreme cold snap over the winter. It was below zero for multiple weeks, if not a month. And the design that he has, which I really wanted to do, I only have a seven foot garage door in my shop. So I was not able to get it tipped back, or if I built it that way, tipped back to be able to get out of my garage. So other than kind of using him as inspiration, so giving credit where credit is due, I started with the nuts and bolts that he laid out, the, uh, two by six base, the three quarter flooring, um, the window sizes, the door and everything else had to be altered and the roof had to be altered. But I'm gonna add a couple braces here so I can climb up into it um, just, to, just to shore it up a little bit and then show you the inside. <laughs> All right. Cheers. I should preface this whole build on saying that I'm I'm not a carpenter. I just kind of your average Joe handy person. I'm this is the biggest thing I've ever built. So if I can do it, you can do it. So and then like I said, I kind of used Brett's build as inspiration. 
Although his design wasn't going to work for what I was doing, I already just said, screw it, and started winging it. So the reason I used OSB, and I know that that's not ideal, is because I already had six or seven sheets left over from a garage project, and I think another sheet left over for something. So I already had the majority of the material that I needed. Now, again, I know that OSB, there's going to be maintenance on this. I'm going to have to keep up on the paint. I'm going to have to you know, come out and caulk the seams and, and do all that fun stuff. But I already had the material. I didn't want to scrap the material that I paid probably $12 for a sheet at the time to go and buy stuff that was now costing $50. So, uh, but to back up to the frame, so I just started kind of framing it out, just kind of guessing as I go and measuring out and having fun with it. I started by building the first wall. I used the measurements that Brett had for his windows and I just kind of worked my way around, I guess, in a clockwise fashion. I cut for the angles on the, um, for the octagon shape, I used his method, cutting them at, ripping them down at 22 and a half degrees, flipping them over, and then joining them together. That, that seemed to work out pretty good. Um, I also glued some of them too, just to add some extra strength in there. Pull them, pull them my pictures of the build so I can narrate this. I, I was not gonna be able to build the uh, roof on this unit inside my shop. I was gonna have to wait till it warmed up and bring it outside. So after I got everything framed up, um, had my little, had a couple of my kids, I have two little boys. That was also another reason why I, I wanted to build this so that I could bring my kids up with me and, uh, and come sit out here. So had a couple little helpers every now and then. So then I moved on to sheeting. I got the whole exterior. I guess the yeah the whole exterior sheeted in the OSB got everything cut down got the windows cut open and then on the top of it what I had to do to try and square everything up like I said I'm not a carpenter just a guy winging it but I ended up and also to raise the headroom so it was the maximum amount that I could get to get underneath my garage door I added uh, two by fours on end all the way around and that with some ratchet straps I was able to pull this thing within a half inch of square so for me that worked out great. Then after that, I moved on to staining it. I used a 30 year house stain. Um, the OSB did seem like it soaked it up pretty well. So I know I'm gonna have to come back out and do it again, but I laid it on thick. I probably put a gallon and a half, um, a gallon and a half on the, on the outside. Um, and then on the inside, what I used is I just went to, I think Menards and got a cheap gallon of um, flat black and cracked a beer and just went to town. So it seems like it worked out well. Um, I don't know how dark it will be if I shut this door, if that darkens it up, but um, I like it open. It's hot out. I picked away and I used Brett's window method. Phenomenal. So thank you for that. You saved me a bunch of money. Now I looked at other window places that are out there. I think Deerview makes some, which are, which are fantastic. But to save some money, I used Brett's method. I can't remember what the total cost is that it ended up being, but it was significantly cheaper. Again, if you haven't seen his videos, go check him out after this one, but go, go check his out. He does a walkthrough of how he, how he came up with it or how, how he lays it out. So it works phenomenally, phenomenally. These, this deer stand's been acting like a playhouse for my kids the last probably month and a half, two months. I just finally got it up here now. It's the end of June, and uh, we've had a couple storms roll through our house, and there hasn't been a drop of water in here. Everything seems to be holding up well, so crossing my fingers, but she seems to be pretty weather tight. Um, and then as far as the inside, what I use is also, I just used some Schedule 40, um, drilled some holes in them, and then I used a washer on the back side, and then ran a screw through it to give it a little bit of separation from the wood. And that's how I, you know, that's how I'm doing the, is this one seen here? Yeah, these. So they turn pretty easily. Oh wait, that one's stuff. <laughs> Normally they turn pretty easy. <laughs> that was a fail. Um, but yeah, they turn, see this one, this one's turning easy. And I uh, just picked up a cheap latch, picked up a cheap latch on Amazon, uh, gate latch so you can turn it from the inside. And I have um, a couple extra closers there, up top and on the bottom. 
I'll just close those when it's not during season just to give a little extra protection in here just so the door's not blown open or, or wind's taking it open. Yeah, that was that. So as far as the rafters go, I know it might be a little cheesy, but I decided to have a little fun with it. So I had, or what I used was I just took two by sixes. So it's six three to the bottom of the rafter in between. They're 24 inch on center. I'm 5'11", so I got plenty of room. If you're a taller guy, you know, you might have to bump this up. But what I did is I just took the torch to them, pulled out the wood grain on them, and then I had some boiled linseed oil at home, rubbed them down with that just to give it kind of a cool little, little finish. I thought it was kind of neat. Painted up the ceiling, and then I just added some cheap uh, garage door or garage hooks that you can get at Menards or anywhere for bow hangers or a gun hanger. Um, but they were 98 cents each, so I figured those would work better than the actual bow hanger. So, or I'll just put my bow on the uh, on the ground here. Then, as far as the roof goes, um, I decided to go with rubber roofing. Now, again, I'm not I'm not in construction, so the reason I decided to go with rubber roofing is because, well, I was about a half inch out of square for the roof. And with rubber roofing, that doesn't really matter. You can lay down there. So I don't know enough about putting steel roofs down if I could have made that up. And with shingles, I just didn't want to mess with that. I just figured, I think all in all total for the rubber roof, it was like 120 bucks with the glue. I didn't think it was terrible. It probably covered up some of my mistakes of it not being square. It's weather tight and it's holding up great. So that's what I decided to do. I know you're probably gonna make fun of me because it's only literally set up three feet. And I left the bracing long because I am gonna raise it up. I didn't wanna sacrifice the extremely overpriced lumber by cutting it off, so I just have it squared up there. But in case life happens and I can't get back out here, I wanted to at least have it up over two feet in case we get a bunch of snow in here. I didn't want snow to be setting up against it because Life's crazy and you know, might not get back up here, but ideally I'd like to lift this up probably only six or eight feet. Um, I wanna make sure that the boys are comfortable getting in it and if my dad wants to use it um, or anybody else, just to make sure that they're, that they're comfy with it. I don't feel the need that where I'm located here or where the stand's gonna be set up that <clears throat> it's pretty flat here. It doesn't need to be 20 feet in the air. As far as moving it too, that was the other reason why I can only get it this high. I'm by myself right now. I just have a 30 horse uh, John Deere 4310. I got a pretty nice ballast box on the back, but I'm impressed with how much that thing lifted. So I would estimate this probably weighs in probably 800 pounds, somewhere in there. So it, it did the trick. Um, total cost wise, I would say now, like I mentioned, I already had the OSB. I had some two by fours, I had to buy some other lumber. You know, I had to buy screws and I had to buy the rubber roof, I had to buy the window material. <clears throat> I would probably say I probably have twelve, thirteen hundred dollars into it. Again, not counting that I had six or seven sheets of OSB. If you were to go and build this right now and go pick out all the lumber and, and do it, I would probably guess that you're probably gonna be in the seventeen to two thousand dollar range now. Hopefully lumber comes back down and it'll be around the $1,200 range or $1,000 range. So here's where I have it set up. So the reason that I picked it here, is as you see behind me, I thought it would be pretty cool. Created these diversity pockets in here, if you can see them all. These quarter acre circles of pines. There's another one behind that. Another one behind that, there's gonna be a bedding area, or there is a bedding area over that with some popples that went down. There's <clears throat> pretty thick bedding area back here, and about 300 yards that way is a creek. And this whole thing, I know it's a complete mess right now, but it's actually starting to green back up. This was all row pines through here nothing there wasn't even a blade of grass growing in here and now <clears throat> we're starting to get some stuff to come back up so i'm going to do another video on on that of why i decided to have this timbered off the point of it so if you like the stuff do me a solid you know subscribe and hang out but 
that's it for the stand i hope you guys like it if you have any questions on it shoot a comment down below i don't like i said i don't have any plans but i'd be glad to get you some pictures of it or, or text you or anything i can help um that's it i like it i'm i'm pretty happy with it i think for my first big stand build like i said i'm just an average average guy average habitator average food plotter average stand builder so if i could figure it out you can figure it out too um just got to go do it and have fun so that's it see you in the next one